Oh yes, it's time for more Roche Diddy Farm. Crunchyroll's most controversial anime got even more controversial. Really? Is Roche Diddy actually the most controversial anime right now? Anyways, let's watch what she has to say. This scene right here, she literally says, mm -hmm. pull me out, I'm stuck. Yeah. And I'm stuck, big bro. Big bro, help me. You've seen the memes. Yes, I have. Uh, you, you're not naive. Anyone out there has seen the, help me step bro, I'm stuck. Now, I wonder if the English voice actor will fully commit to the memes and the culture and deliver the lines that people are expecting. I mean, I would expect her to, unless the higher-ups decide that, listen, we can't be really doing this much memory. Uh, you definitely have seen those memes. You're not telling me you haven't, okay? If you've been on the internet, in some shape or form, you have. And this... Whoever animated this, okay? Not This doesn't even go on to the voice actress or the writer, but whoever animated this, they know what they were doing. Yeah. This is new levels of down bad that is just... <laughs> I, I, dude, I love this show, man. This I thought it was funny. I thought it was a very clever way of... I don't know, because like everyone knows the fucking memes, right? But the fact that they actually went on and did it, it just solidifies why people love why Yuki so much. It's just fun. This show is just freaking fantastic. It really is. So I know you guys are probably going to cringe from this or might say this is based or whatever it might be. But I want to take a few moments to say that there is a voice actor. The voice actress of this character, Yuki, had mm -hmm. to sit in a studio, okay? Yeah, in a padded that. room, basically, with the voicing equipment. Yeah, and said all these things, and just think about what, like, hentai voice actors go through. That's what I always, like, envision in my mind. It's like, what is, like, the setup? Like, they're just, like, making all these noises, and they have to say the most cringe lines. Oh my god, your heart, the thing is... I don't want to say it, I don't get too monetized, but it's like, the dialogue is so cringe. And, like, I can't imagine, like, real adults in a room just, like, doing that shit after a take is over. What do they say? It's just like, oh shit, that was so cringe, I don't know. And voice all these lines for this character, and she had to do it with a straight face with all this nuance yeah. and emotion put into it. Honestly, I cannot imagine just how hilarious she is as an individual. Like, you know she has to have a funny sense of humor. And I, I just want to say one thing as well. This is one of those times where I really wish that Crunchyroll had the comment section. Yeah, the memes would be going crazy. And instead of the comment section, people will obviously probably go to the, the subreddit posts on our anime and talk there on my anime list, but... It is what it is. No more comment section. Comment section. Because can you imagine what the comment section is the saying memes. about this episode? What they've been saying about, you know, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. I mean, we literally have this character, Yuki, that is just straight up, like... Best girl? Incest bait. That, that's literally what she is. That That's exactly what she has been yeah. doing for episodes now, basically since her full introduction since episode two. I mean, to really kind of get right into this, we have scenes like this, and then you literally have a scene like a few minutes later where the MC, you know, he gets up out of his bed, and he is literally <laughs> grabbed by his sister while she's under the- Like, look at this- that was still out of nowhere. It's like, oh, I guess Yuki scenes are done, but no, she grabs you. It's like, what the fuck? She's not on my bed right now? I thought Yuki would do something in the morning. It's like, it's like she was underneath. It's fucking stupid, but funny. <laughs> the, the laugh, like, we got, we got to rewind that. Listen to the laugh here. The laugh is like, <laughs> And her face. It's like, it's such a gremlin, dude. Like, such a chaotic gremlin. I yes, a little gremlin sister. And beyond the fan service, if you look at that dialogue, if you thought this is going to end all sappy, like, think again. I don't think this is just pure fan service here. Because if you actually watched the episode, what was the events that led up to this? Right? The whole discussion of Alia, you know, getting supported by uh, uh, the big bro. And how bad she might have felt about that. And she was trying to blow it off like it's not a big deal and she's acting as if it's not a big deal but it kind of shows like beyond just the funny you know this big bro i'm stuck those kind of fan service moments you know there might be a little bit more vulnerable more intimate you know a more uh, serious thing underneath that's being what's the word hidden with this mask of gremlin little sister who's gonna say i'm stuck little uh, big bro I love it, dude. Like, it just, the voice actors understood the assignment, knew what to do to make this character really just brought to life. But also, I'm just going to be honest here. The offer of this show yeah. that writes Alia, they have done a good job with Yuki's character. I know people might quit, be quick. I think that Yuki is probably most people's favorite characters right now. And it's very easy to see why. Just look at this shit. 
even the first episode or like the, the first episode where Yuki was a secret was revealed as well. And I think it's unfair in trying to compare characters like Yuki versus Alia, right? Because like Alia will never be the fan favorite or majority favorite because she cannot show this level of affection and you know funny moments that Yuki can. Because Yuki can do this because he is already the little sis, right? Alia and Masachika they're trying to figure out their feelings and try to figure out, you know, are we going to get into a relationship or not? It's going to be a little bit more like prude and a little bit more hesitant. But you can just can just go balls out. She can just pop off immediately. That's why she has moments like this. That's why people probably love her way more than Alia. To write it off as like, you know, like I said, like sibling bait, all that type of stuff. I, I, I fully understand. If people are not for this or they don't like this and all that, that's that's completely fine. That, that is. There is nothing wrong if you don't like this stuff in anime or whatever, but it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be. You know, there is just, you know, freedom <laughs> of expression and also freedom to write whatever you want, so to speak. So, sure. basically, I think that... I agree. There is freedom of expression, freedom to write whatever you want, freedom to say whatever you want. But with that level of freedom also comes the same level of criticism. You can say whatever the fuck you want, right? You can show whatever the fuck you want. But don't get mad at people coming in and saying, like, this shit's fucking cringe or degenerate. Because, like, let's get real. Is it not? Of course it is. Overall, there's nothing wrong, personally, for offers doing this. But I can understand why people would be a little bit upset, maybe, with this show and not want to watch it. But regardless of that, why I'm complimenting the offer is the fact that this offer knows the tropes, knows the memes with, when it comes to stuff like this, and it's very clear. I don't know if the offer is a boy or girl, whatever it may be, but the offer definitely knows. And this very scene here, when she's, like, under the bed, it is a continuation, like, follow-up from the second episode. Because if you remember that iconic scene that I even made a video a few days ago on with the English dub, my Oni-chan, my brother, yeah, that one. ...where it was just even more unhinged and controversial than the actual Japanese subtitled. Well, basically, in that scene, if you remember, you know, she basically talks about how next time she'll be under his bed or whatever, like a... a oh, did she? Did she actually prophesize that? A hentai tentacle monster. That's what she literally says to oh, him shit. in the second episode, oh, in the shit. dub and in the sub. And this is episode five, and it's kind of like a follow-up to that scene to where she's under his bed and trying to grab him and spook him. And it's just, like I said, she is a chaotic gremlin, and I love her so much. The energy she gives off as a character is just truly funny as hell. And it's like, it's rare to have a character really capture the tropes and vibes of like a sister character in a way that doesn't come off too overbearing, too hmm. cringy. It just it's just right. And obviously maybe this is my personal just the right amount of cringe. I feel like because she was introduced fully embracing the cringe, it's kind of like the Eminence and Shadow effect where it's just like they know what they're doing. They're not trying to shy away from it. They're fucking doubling down. And because they did that, maybe we as the audience finds it more acceptable. Take on it because obviously, you know, people might disagree with me. But I think just the way the voice actress, the writing and the animation and art kind of come together for this show Yuki 100% is hard carrying. Like, I'm yes, really blunt. Now, absolutely. 100%. Right now, it's definitely Yuki. Alia has her moments here and there, but like, I think that, like, if you ask, like, the average fan, of course, there's going to be some people that likes Alia more than Yuki, but on, like, a broad basis, I think a lot of people definitely watch this show because of the viral moments from episode two where Yuki was doing that shit, as well as the most recent episode. And, like, numbers are pretty telling. I know that the YouTube reaction viewership is not significant or um, indicative of what the true global audience wants to say, but I think that there is some level of like a coefficient factor of like relative. If they do well, then obviously more people are watching. If they don't do as well, that means that less people are watching. But episode two and five, I think, are going to have the highest level of viewership. I'm just looking at like, I'm literally just looking at my viewership right now. Like this shit here, bro. This is the analytics for episode five right now and like it is actually insane how if you can hit like 1000 views in the first 55 minutes for the first hour you see this shit this is the same track trajectory that episode two had i noticed that if you can hit 1000 views in the first hour of upload that's like very good indication that shit's gonna fucking pop off and I mean, it's Roche data, right? Everybody fucking loves Roche data. But again, just seeing other data points, numbers in here and there. Yeah, Yuki is fucking hard carrying. Episode 2 and 5 both are just doing numbers. Okay. To be fair, the show is very good in all fronts. Even when Yuki is not on the screen, it's a very good show. Yeah, for sure. It's got a good premise. It's got a good, you know, wholesome story.
it's just that when Yuki's in the frame, when Yuki's having lines, it just takes the show to the next level. And maybe it's only when they're in private, because obviously this kind of dynamic can happen more. And this dynamic, I think, is the thing that's really caring. In public, these two obviously can't act that way. But in private, for sure, these scenes are hard carrying. Building up here and all that, I love the characters overall, not just Yuki. But Yuki, anytime she is on screen, anytime yep. she has a spotlight, and this episode spins literally pretty much half the episode on her, anytime she's on screen, you know you're going to get a laugh if you have made it this far. You're going to enjoy yourself, you're going to get a laugh, because she always just mixes things up with these unhinged comments that just straight up feel out of like a like a, an H novel or like a parody. I mean... It's not too far away, right? I mean, she's literally... What kind of actual sister would show up and say, Oh yeah, I was waiting for this specific cutscene to play. That's why I was waiting in the bathroom and waiting for you to, you know, uh, sneak in on me, Oni-chan. Like, no actual sibling's gonna say that. And like, this is basically H anime fan service, right? Like, it's, 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 it's a fantasy. But the author knows and they play up to the audience's expectations that they're delivering. You have one and all that. I just, I love it. It's super, super funny. And like... Another thing that I really like here, that's honestly, it just goes to show the author knows what they're talking about, or like they know about the the parodies and the the themes, etc. Yeah. This scene right here, she literally <laughs> says, huh? "Pull me out, I'm <laughs> stuck." <laughs> and you seen the memes? Come on, uh, you, you're not, not. I swear to God, Chibi is literally repeating himself. I'm getting deja vu right now. <laughs> already said this in the first half. <laughs> we were literally already there. Okay, let's hear it again. Naive. Anyone out there has seen the, help me step bro, I'm stuck. Uh, you definitely have seen those memes. You're not telling me you haven't, okay? Oh yeah, I've seen the memes and I've seen you talk about it. Just like five minutes ago, yes. If you've been on the internet, in some shape or form you have. And this... <laughs> Whoever yeah. animated this, okay, not this doesn't even go on to the voice actress or the writer, but whoever animated this, yes, they know what they were doing. The studio, yes. This is new levels of down bad. That is just, <laughs> I, I, dude, I love this show, man. This show is just freak. Am I actually crazy, or did he actually like include like? Isn't he saying? I swear to God, this is word for word. Did he have a cut here? I think he literally, I see, I see. Like, we're not crazy right now. What he literally did, so there's a thing called like a hook in a, in a video or an essay or whatever. And what you want to do sometimes in the intro is show like the most exciting part or the thing that you care most about right in the beginning. So what he, he literally said that shit and then it cut away, obviously to the beginning of the video. So this portion in the beginning was actually from this part of the video. Freaking fantastic. It okay. really is. But um, getting into the earlier segments of the episode, I, I do want to talk about something. So this character, Yuki, she literally, at the beginning, our MC walks into the room. Like he walks into the house and all that. Just getting back and all that. She was Going waiting. To joining the student council. He walks in and his sister is there. It's one of the typical cliche scenes of like walking in on, you know. Yeah, and then goes Kia Hentai and it gets slapped and there it is. But she knows. She's a weeb, bro. Well, it's not accurate to say weeb. She's an otaku, right? That's why she was waiting for that cutscene to play out. Oh, your sibling or whatever, and you have this very cliche moment where she's either going to slap, hit, hit him or whatever. But that doesn't do that. Like, we, we, we don't have the show do that whatsoever. And in fact, it kind of leans into this to where the character, the female character here, Yuki, she's like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. And the MC's like, you definitely got in position to do this, right? This would happen as soon as I walked into the door. And it's really funny because she doesn't deny it. It's clearly what she was doing. And it was the intention of the scene. And then even while this scene is going well, on and he's talking about this, she actually starts talking about like actual fourth wall breaking stuff. Like, look, look at this. Like, she literally mentions it. So, as she's talking about it, watch this. Breaks the fourth wall. Only show that's done that this season is Nokotan. And does breaking the fourth wall mean that it's better all of a sudden? No. But I can appreciate during these moments that she was willing to just like include that fan service shot just to show to the audience that, like, yeah. We know what you want. Here it is, you degenerates. Yeah. <laughs> and watch. 
she broke the fourth wall. So yes. this Chaos Gremlin is aware of the fourth wall. She is aware that she's, she's becoming technically sentient. a parody of a character. And I, I feel like this adds a new level, a layer to her that yeah. I just really appreciate. Because this show knows what it is. Yuki as a character knows what she is. The writer knows how to write Yuki. And I think that overall... It's like a culmination of just every perfect theme that comes together to really just make her character stand out. I know I've pretty much dedicated this whole video to pretty much... Man, us weebs, we're never gonna beat the allegations. You ever wonder why the normies make fun of us, bro? Here we are as a community, getting so fucking hyped that a girl was willing to just, like, dive into the tropes and say the step sis, I'm step bro, I'm stuck fit. And, like, it's kind of telling, huh? Like, that, that, like, the most popular anime, the most talked about moments right now are just these fucking fan service scenes, right? It just, and you wonder why people think that, like, weebs are just, like, bottom of the barrel trash that only cares about just fucking cheap fan service. But, like, I don't think this is cheap fan service. I think that this is, um, well polished fan service gassing up yuki as a character but yeah. i'm gonna be honest she's great like i said it's been a while since a character has captured me to such a degree that is a support side character and in her own words a childhood friend character that mm -hmm. has really got my attention on the screen and like like i said she doesn't annoy me i'm not annoyed i don't true not a single point have i ever thought that yuki was annoying but i i'm sorry Type 1 in chat if you think Alia is annoying. Type 2 if you don't. And that's unfair. Because like Alia, her entire personality archetype, it's supposed to come off a bit annoying. She is that Russian girl, Sundere, very high, like kind of tense, you know, uh, cool, cold girl. But compared to the other characters like Masha and Yuki, a lot of the shit that Alia does I think pisses a lot of people off. If you keep... Motherfucker, the same fucking person spamming 2 the entire time does not show proper representation. Most people think that like Alia is straight up an L. Straight up an L character that's annoying and we don't want her. Fuck Alia. We want Masha. We want Yuki. I think we need to give Alia some time to cook. I think we need to give Alia some time to cook. And again, it's, it's unfair right now because... In rom-com, right, these characters, they all have different roles to play, and Yuki has different parameters to fucking work with. And... In the early game, I, I, I think Yuki is a early game hyper carry. She scales really well in the early game, but she might plateau and fall off. Alia, I think, starts off very slow, is poor in the early game, but as she goes into the end game, she'll be very... Hyper carrying, just hyper scaling into the end game. This is how I view Alia and Yuki. Yuki is unfair. Alia, we need to give her some time to cook. I don't feel like it's a waste of time, and it just, it's, it's, I don't know. And it's all way, despite some cringe, in, in, it's supposed to be cringy to a degree, it's wholesome. I don't know. So it, it, it's something about that. And I don't know. I, I like Alia sometimes. I think it's, again, the eminence and shadow effect where you embrace the cringe, you introduce yourself as being cringe, and you, and then suddenly the fans. Love it because you're double downing on it. Our hides our feelings in Russian. I know not everybody's gonna like the show because obviously it's getting more and more popular by yep. the day. I see a lot more people talking about the show. But overall, if I had to talk about the popularity of this season, we all know that Oshinoko is kind of popular. I don't feel like. <laughs> is it? Is Oshinoko popular? Listen, DVD sales. It depends on what metric you use to you know uh, realize what is popular, right? The metric that I'm using right now is obviously just YouTube viewership. And I think that YouTube reaction viewership, even though it's not the end-all be-all things, it's still a data point. And I think that obviously makes sense that if there's more popular animes, more people are going to be seeking out that content. If it's less popular, less people are. So it's not the, again, it's not an absolute, but it's definitely a data point. And what I've seen is that Roshitere is on another fucking league of popular. It's insane the amount of people seeking out this content. Oshinoko, I cannot say the same. Now, we'll have to compare the actual DVD sales globally and in Japan to figure out, you know, what actually matters. Because at the end of the day, what really matters is the amount of money that the studios and the producers make off that IP and then you can do a full comparison. But purely just looking at YouTube numbers, Oshinoko is washed and Roshitere is on top to the point no one can fucking touch it. A bad performing Roshitere video gets more views than the best performing Oshinoko video this season. Isn't that sad? 
It's sad and funny at the same time. But again, there's a lot of logic in why Oceanic was doing relatively bad. Because second season, you've already filtered out the people that showed up for season one and might not want to watch season two. And the initial premise of the murder plot being one of the focal points of people getting hooked into the show, which is not being shown as the show progressed as much as they hoped. And I can totally understand why people are not as excited for Oshinoku compared to Roche today. Like it's being talked about as much as it should, in my personal opinion, but it's still popular. And I know Nokotan is definitely making waves. We, I think we all have seen the memes and parodies. Nokotan watched as well. Nope, I'm serious, bro. I think that Nokotan hype was there for sure. Nokotan hype was on that level of Roche today in the openings and trailers, but now it's suffering from success because they started off strong, but suddenly they're waning away from why people watch that shit. What was it? For the bizarreness of Nokotan, and now they're doing a shitload of character introductions with the main content being Koshitan's reaction to those situations, which many people don't really find funny, to be honest. And I think that we'll have to give some time now with all the different characters being introduced. Maybe Nokotan can now go back to the former glory that it's shown in episode one and two. But if it can't and it just turns into a slice of life, it doesn't mean it's a bad anime. It just means that it didn't live up to the expectations that people gave it. He's a Nokotan. But I think that if there is one show that really has come out of nowhere and has continued to Roche remain Dede. consistent week by week. And I have Roche continued Dede. to see the... And too many losing heroines. Roche Dede and too many losing heroines right now. Like, again, just pure YouTube reaction numbers. Those two are on top. Those two are fucking cracked. Now, Too Many Losing Heroines has only had three episodes, so it's not really indicative just yet, right? We'll have to let it play out. But the hype is still there. It's not plateauing. It's not coming down so hard. Conversation around it grow for better or, you know, for worse. Alia is doing that. And it's definitely getting a lot of conversation around it. I definitely yeah. have seen some negativity around it as well, obviously, from the... Man, we need to start farming, right? All these animes that go viral and suddenly gets a bunch of tourists and normies eyes on it and they start, you know, condemning this show for, let's say, oh, incest bad and stuff like that. Oh, we can then farm those videos too. Wow, that can't accept any form of themes like this with Yuki and all that in literature. But these are the same type of people that will gas up, let's say, the boys or they'll gas up Game of Thrones or something. You know, food for thought there. But uh, getting into the point is that... Um... Chibi hates the boys in Game of Thrones? No, I think we're talking about the incest themes and how you can't be hypocritical, right? I really think that Alia, at this point in time, yeah. this isn't my opinion, but just from my observation, okay, it's probably the most popular series of the anime season. Yes, I re this, is an, in, this is an absolute fact. In, again, have to wait for DVD sales to really see how many people gives a fuck enough to swipe their card, but again, in terms of viewership, Roche Dede on top. I really do think so. Now, this could obviously change with time. Maybe yeah, Nier sure. might make a resurgence, and I have definitely seen... <laughs> I'm sorry. Just the idea that an anime like Nier, which flopped in Season 1 because of scheduling, could possibly make a comeback in Season 2 and dethrone Roche today. There's a 0% chance of that happening, at least in the, again, the YouTube viewership. Seeing that as of late, there's definitely a research and a conversation around that that makes no, me it's very, not happening. very happy that more people are talking about Nier. I need to get back onto that and talk about the series, but uh, I think that Alia is probably the most popular. Yes. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my content... Yes, I do. Y'all know what to do. Please go like the video. Here's the video over here and sub to the channel if you haven't. Yeah, I thought he was being sarcastic there about Nier as well. But yeah, Roche did it right now. It's just such a delight. Every Wednesday, just the views go up. But the anime itself is also amazing. I can genuinely say that Roche did it is probably top three anime that I'm enjoying this season, if not top one. And obviously, you know, as you do content creation and you see one series gets more numbers, it's going to have a dopamine boost effect. And you're going to conflate that feeling of happiness to and you know and you're gonna conflate that with the feeling of is this anime actually good or not but i can genuinely say that even if i wasn't doing anime reactions roche today is that good i'd watch it on myself please go watch it if you haven't